G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is foul play here, back for the fifth and final match of this pauper league. We lost the die rolls versus Kizmax, and we're mulligan to six here. I think this hand is probably keepable. Um, opponent keeps six, okay. So this one, I think we want to keep Lotus Petal. The bottom decision is between Abundant Growth and Ancestral Mask, and I think it has to be Abundant Growth off of that. I'm going to turn one Lotus Petal to get Forest, play our Scout, and go from there. And we've got the Mirror Match. I'm very happy to see Ancestral Mask in our opening hand. Pretty important one. All right, so we actually find Forest naturally, uh, which means we can turn to Ancestral Mask and attack. And we see Cartouche of Solidarity. A Rancor would help round it out nicely for our opponent on the curve here. Uh, followed up by Utopia Sprawl on green. Interesting. So I suppose they've got more green effects in hand than white. We'll take the damage. And Utopia Sprawl off the top for us. Um, so this seems fine. Uh, we complains. We can Lotus Petal. We can then float green off the Lotus Petal. Utopia, Utopia Sprawl over here, pardon me. And I guess ours goes on green as well, just given the configuration of our hand. Now, we could attack. The Warrior Token is going to do a pretty good job of fogging us. I think leaving back blocks works. It's only bad against exactly Ancestral Mask on our opponent's side. Yes, a combination of like Ethereal Llama plus Rancor might also be troublesome. All right, an opponent plays out Spirit's Companion here, drawing a card, and commune with Spirits. So they've taken a bit of time off to develop. Now remember, Spirited Companion also buffs our Ancestral Mask, so our boy is getting pretty big currently. As long as we don't see Ancestral Mask, I think we're in an okay spot. All right, so opponent a bit unfortunate finding that one, I feel. And we do see planes off the top there. Um, I guess the line is play the planes. We'll just utilize like one of each color. Uh, so we can play any white aura off the top or another Zetess in training, should that be what we find. All right, so Utopia Spirit off the top for us. Doesn't really matter how we sequence this one. Let's throw down. All right, so we'll go ahead and attack for 14 now. Um, no need to give our opponent any more time than they need. Really pile on the pressure here. It's very unlikely they're gonna be able to deal 18 to us next turn. All right, they go to six. And remember any aura they play that is not Ancestral Mask um, will actually grow our, bigger, our creature bigger than theirs. Um, yes. Armadillo Cloak would grow them evenly big, uh, but that's not a winning position for them. All right, so we see Utopia Sprawl here, and that doesn't seem like the play to me, but we'll see what they have to follow it up. And our opponent does concede the match there. Um, now, a standard Bogle list will be running sideboard cards like Standard Bearer, Ram Through. Um, it's mostly about it that you have to worry about. Occasionally, there might be some enchantment uh, interaction via Exile or destru Destruction, but um, for the most part it's going to be pretty much these cards. So Standard Bearer comes in to screw us over, and then Ram 3 comes in to next level the uh, Standard Bearer. And a reminder guys, that if you do enjoy the video, please consider subscribing for more content like this. Alright, so we will be looking at bringing in Standard Bearer plus Gutshot. Gutshot to deal with our opponent's Standard Bearers. Um, now, we need to note that our Satessan Trading and our Cartouches have to target creatures we control, so they can't target an opponent's Standard Bearer. Uh, so they're pretty strong from that sense. I still think Sentinel's Eyes is pretty strong as well. Um, I guess we're looking at like Rancor and Lotus Petals as our weak cards. So we'll go ahead and minus out like that, submit and get into it. Our opponent is keeping seven cards. This hand has got Standard Bearer, but no white mana currently. Um, 
Almost would have been better if this was a gut shot, if you ask me. We also have Satessan Training plus Ancestral Mask. So in the absence of an opponent having Standard Bearer, I think this is pretty reasonable. Um, I think we can keep just off the fact that these other two auras are castable. Uh, all right, so I accidentally skipped to their second main, but no matter, they get their creature out. And Ethereal Armor off the top. All right, so opponent is using their Ash Barons here, no doubt I to get a Plains. Uh, never mind, that was for a Forest. And we see a setup turn with Utopia Sprawl. So one of our two Plains or two Lotus Petals would be a really strong play for us to jam out the Standard Bearer, assuming our opponent does not have interaction for it. Well, asking you shall receive. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and just offer the trade here. I th think this is fine. All right, opponent is willing to let that one go through. So second main will play out our standard bearer and force our opponent to have the answer for it. All right, it <laughs> did not buffer my forest click. Gotta love that client lag. All right, pass the turn. All right, and abundant growth onto the planes of all mana sources. I guess they've got one white floating currently, so that seems fine. Leaves them with like two white sources up for future turns anyway. That probably means that they're digging for an answer. I imagine if we resolve Ancestral Mask, I can't see our opponent ever removing this off the board from that point forward. I think if they have Gut Shot instead of being tricky and doing an instant speed, they probably just kill off the standard bearer now. Slam down a bunch of auras and then uh, start clocking us before we get an answer. Okay, another Utopia Sprawl. Goodness, this is going to be flashbacks to the first game. Uh, yeah, so I assume they just don't have the answer for this guy and they're just trying to make the best of a bad situation. And opponent is not even attacking into us in that spot. All right, opponent, do you have the gut shot? Uh, our creature will be a 6-6 six, six currently. Uh, sorry, 7-7, seven, seven, uh, getting 6 from the auras. And that has resolved. I mean, they're still losing to cards like Revoke Existence, but we've got to be happy with the position we are in. And opponent no blocks it down to 12. All right, opponent with their uh, second Abundant Growth, their fourth land enchantment of the game, buffing our creature up further. All right, we see an Abundant Growth of our own now. So let's start off with Abundant Growth, draw trigger. If we don't hit a land, we can play out our forest. See like Armadillo Cloak. Armadillo Cloak is very surplus to requirements right now. Stats and training. Uh, drawing an additional card, another Armadillo Cloak. All right, well, we'll completely throw it down. No path to exile in this format. And attack on in. Our opponent does decide to block here. It will be trampling 19 damage, and that's the victory. All right, so that was a pretty reasonable way to wrap up the league. We saw our one of Standard Bearer in the sideboard coming in absolutely clutch in that final game there. Um, yep, pretty fortunate to hit that one. I'm not going to lie, even slightly. Um... I'm still like on the fence as to whether or not we even need Crimson Acolyte for the burn matchup. Uh, I, I mean, it's such a high percentage of the metagame that maybe it's just okay to run it with all the end the festivities they are running in response to us. Uh, I'm still a strong believer of the Lotus Petal variant of the deck. I think that's really strong. Um... I think like two planes is fine. Ash Baron's Axe is fodder for Sentinel's Eyes, but... Maybe we can like minus out one Ash Barons for either an extra forest, Cave of Temptation, Crystal Grotto. Um, let me know what you're thinking in the comment section. The upside to an extra forest is it gives you more hits for turn two, second forest plus Utopia Sprawl, um, getting you to your green and white mana. Uh, 
guess the downside is in the hands where you don't have Utopia Sprawl, it just makes it a little bit more awkward to get to your land drops. Overall, the uh, Satessan trainings seem to work well, um, and the minusing of Rancor didn't really seem to affect us too bad. I am curious, I think next league I'm going to muck around with it, I'm going to remove all copies of Rancor, I'm going to go up to two copies of Sentinel's Eyes and four copies of Satessan training. I really want to stress test this because it's possible that like Although Rancor is more fit, mana efficient than Satessan Training, uh, Satessan Training makes up for the card disadvantage of Lotus Petal. Um, the power less, the mana less is hopefully not going to matter too much and increase consistency. I think like Rancor is definitely one of the more powerful auras in the deck. I'm just not sure if it's where we want to be with the Lotus Battle build. A lot of the time, if this ends up in your graveyard from your creature getting a Chainer's Edict, you're probably losing anyway. Um, so it's whether or not the extra power and uh, the one less mana is, is outweighs the card draw realistically. Um, but yeah, thank you all once again for watching. As always, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Until next time, have a wonderful day and I'll see you then.